Hello and good morning everyone and thank you so much for joining me in the backyard. We've been doing these Sunday lives in the backyard every morning at 10.30 a.m. Sorry, every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Uh, we've been doing this since I think uh, January and um, this is giving me a really good opportunity to create uh, a journal of gardening uh, through 2020. January, also just through the seasons, to get an idea of what it looks like as we make our way around the calendar year. And what does this particular year look like compared to last year or next year? And so that's been really good, not only for my own garden, but I hope for you as well. One of the things that you can know is that if you're not always available to get here with me on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. because you're attending church or you've got a family activity, you're out of town, whatever the reason is, know that I take these videos, I download them to YouTube, and then I post them back up again. You can often find them on, the, on my website. And then, of course, you can always go back to the old um, Facebook Lives that are there available for you to look at at any time. Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about an experience I got to have this morning, which I thought was really amazing. And I, and I think that the other gardeners in the Corpus Christi area that we live in would like to know about. The First United Methodist Church that is down on Shoreline, uh, you know, with the big surf in Jesus. <laughs> if you're from Corpus Christi, you know that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, back in, I think it was maybe in January or February, I began having a conversation with the pastor there, Pamela Dykehouse, about what it would be like to have a community garden there at the First United Methodist Church. And very quickly, Michael Swatner, who led this project with us, um, really got the building going of getting this project going, going under, sorry, getting started and really taking off. Um, but one of the conversations I was always having with um, Pastor Dykehouse from the very beginning is the idea that I personally had really quit attending church services. It just didn't fit me anymore. And really, I, I talked a lot about praying in the garden and that that's the, the best place for me to be, outside, praying at the garden, praying at the beach. The different outdoor nature elements are where I find my peace. If you go back to last week's live episode, you will see I am absolutely there talking about the, the, the connection with nature and the opportunity to find peace and prayer in your garden, that that too is a part of it. Well, one of the things that I find most amazing is that after this community got started, Grow Local is now managing that project and helping First United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad that they have a great partnership there. But now, this morning for the first time as they open up the church church doors and welcome people back into church they realize there are people not just because of a, a potential virus um, amongst us but there are people that would rather do church services outdoors and so they hosted this morning for the very first time a 7 30 a.m church service it was about 30 minutes long and it was in that community garden and i can tell you that my heart was full my spirit was full i was in tears practically the whole time with joy my daughter was with me my mother was with me and other gardeners that were there that have been a part of that project came together and prayed and i just want to invite you all out to that as well if you ever feel the urge to just get out in the garden on a 7 30 a.m and pray with other gardeners and pray with others that are wanting to be outside that's a great place to do it. It's the First United Methodist Church down on Shoreline Boulevard. And I look forward to meeting you out there on Sunday, next Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Okay, let's get back to business, right? So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about this morning is the idea of cover cropping. June tends to be the time of year that we're really not doing a ton of planting. It's been a fortunate year. May was much cooler than last May. There was a lot more rain and June has been a lot cooler than last June and there's been a lot more rain, which means we've had the opportunity to plant a little bit later and we've continued to harvest into this June season. I'm kind of expecting this year's garden, especially even with the beautiful winter we had where we could grow all year long, I'm looking at maybe a, t a full 20 month growing season that we've had available to us over the year. 20 month meaning that you go through the 12 months and then you get right back around to it and we've never really stopped. We've never really stopped growing. We're continuing to plant, we're continuing to harvest and there's been no lull. Um, that's good and bad. If you're tired, take some time for yourself. But here's an opportunity and a way to take some time for yourself, and that is cover cropping. That's a time to let your land sit quietly. That's a, a time to let you sit quietly. But one of the things that I, I value with extreme importance because of the, um, 
because of just making sure that we don't leave land uncovered. I will tell you that um, over at the Learning Garden, when I was in charge of that project and was leading people to grow, I was very, very adamant about consistently telling folks, never leave your ground uncovered. Always make sure your ground is covered. So even to the point of, you know, let those weeds go. It's okay. Now, if you see one that's starting to seed, a weed that's starting to seed that really bugs you, go ahead and pull that sucker out, give it to your chickens, put it in your compost, throw it out, whatever you wanna do with it. But the idea is it's more important to have ground coverage than it is to clean it all up and make sure that it doesn't look ugly, whatever. So what can we do to make those spaces look pretty even as we're continuing to let things grow? So I'm gonna get up and show you some things here in just a minute, even some things that might be considered weeds and that I've let grow um, so that you can see what types of things I'm talking about. But just before we get on to that, I wanna, um, for those of you that are maybe taking notes or anything, I wanna talk about a few specific plants that you can keep in mind for growing. Now, I'm not saying everybody run out to the store and plant everything that I'm listing today in June. It's still a hot summer, the summer's gonna be hard, uh, we're having to do that watering again that maybe we hadn't had to do because of the nice rains. Um, these are just things to keep in mind as you're preparing your ground for fall and as you're preparing your as you're preparing to plant. This is the concept of looking for these plants, starting to get an idea of what you're going to plant and plant. So things like mint, peppermints, spearmints, all of those things are a very nice ground cover. As the as their vines grow, they will reconnect and root into the ground and then continue growing. You can actually cover an entire space with nothing but mint, and the mint will take off and it will kill out, knock out, block out everything, including the weeds. So one of the things I, in this garden back over here, this very first garden that I went to, and I'll talk just a little bit more about that in a minute, that, complete, that garden when I first planted it that first January, and I did didn't have a lot of plants to put in and I didn't have a lot of time for it I had a lovely peppermint plant that just took it over and that was fine for that time it kept that ground nice and moist that's an important part of this as the summer heat sets in any open soil is just gonna get beat down by the Sun and anything that was alive any in any mycorrhizal fungi any of the little micro microbiotics that are going on they all die and you want that life that life is extremely important for your successful garden oregano different types of oregano at the beginning of the show you noticed this cuban oregano right here you've heard me talk about it a lot it's a beautiful landscape plant but it also stretches and grows and will help to cover areas that you're looking to cover thyme trailing rosemary these are all herbs that are fantastic for this another one that you could probably still plant today but don't don't quote me on it. If you plant it, if it doesn't come up, then try again next year a little bit earlier. But sweet potato. If you put a sweet potato in the ground between about April and mid-June, you're usually okay. You put it in the ground, and then it's going to start growing this beautiful green uh, overgrowth that just grows over the ground, and it will cover the entire space. It will cover and block out everything. In addition to it being something that you can get the tubers from, the sweet potatoes, you can also eat the ground cover as well. That's called a sweet potato spinach is what some people like to call it. It's just another green that's edible and available for you to eat. Other things that you might keep in mind as a ground cover are pumpkins and vining, squ vining squash. If you threw a pumpkin out in your yard and all of a sudden there's a pumpkin vine coming up and you had no intentions of gardening but you're leaving that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's, there's a complete total ground cover. The same thing with watermelon. Those things will help to block out and knock out a lot of the different types of weeds and things like that that you're dealing with. I will tell you that if the weeds came up before the ground cover went down, like the, the squash and stuff like that, you might see some of that grass starting to come up. That just helps you keep in mind types of ground cover, you better ground cover you want to use for the next season for different types of pumpkin planting. But please don't rush out and weed out that area because every time I've ever went in and weeded out around my beautiful vining squash or pumpkins, I've pretty much killed all my squash back because it just likes to have that consistent ground cover. It doesn't like to be messed with too much. So just let it grow. It'll be just fine. Yarrow, I've pointed out yarrow to you before. Yarrow is a great, and, and, we'll, and I'll point these things out again so you know what the plant looks like. Clover, let's talk about clover. I don't care what anybody tells you, do not spray weed killer on your clover. It doesn't make any sense at all because clover is an important plant for ground cover. It's an important plant for ground cover. It dies in the heat. 
and it actually provides flowers for the different types of pollinators coming around. So if you spray weed killer in your grass to knock back a weed that's gonna go away in a very short amount of time, you're just wasting your money and killing things. And there's really no necessary reason for that. In addition to that, you're gonna come right back in after the grass. One second if there's a question. I'm spinning, no? What's, what are you pointing at me for? <laughs> there's a um if you're if that right as uh you you kill that you kill those clovers then you go back in and you pay money to put fertilizer on the ground well the clover's job is a nitrogen fixing plant it actually is putting fertilizer into your grass so that's an important one and i'm going to point out some of the clover that i've protected and let grow some of it's a weed some of it i planted on purpose either way it's a ground cover that i want there for as long as it's available to be there and i don't have something else i want planted there okay what are some ornamentals that you can work with trailing lantana you know about all the different types of lantana there's a couple of varieties that are called trailing lantanas they're native to our area and they will stay low they won't grow into the big bushing lantana Widelia. it's a very similar plant to a mallow uh, weed it's uh, it's got a kind of a spiky leaf yellow flowers it will help cover your ground in areas of your ornamental gardens and things like that that you're working on um, another one would be uh, let's see we're also, those are the main, oh, verbena. I wanted to make sure to tell you about verbena. That's another wild native that grow that can stay gr close to the ground, puts a pretty little purple flower on it. It's a great uh, plant in our area as well. Okay, let's talk about things that aren't exactly a cover crop or a ground cover, but are something that you should definitely plant for cover cropping. And that is your peas, like black-eyed peas. I'm gonna point a lot of those out to you today. Dal uh, is, a, is a plant that's used in India a lot and is eaten in India a lot. You might've heard of uh, uh, that dish, dal, as a dish. Um, D-A-H-L, you can look that up. It's also um, got another, I think it's pigeon pea is a name you might hear the farmers talking about it here in America. It's also a great plant to put in as a cover crop, helps to put nitrogen in the soil just like other peas. Um, Buckwheat is an extremely important cover cropping plant. It actually likes a little bit of the cooler temperature. So as the temperatures start to go down in the September, that's a good cover cropping plant to use as well. Radish, you can plant radish year round. Daikon radish is not only gonna help to cover the ground, but it's also gonna put some tilling in. It's gonna grow a big, nice uh, fat radish into the ground that's gonna help you till your soil as well. So radishes are really great for cover cropping as well. Um, weeds like mallow, some of the um, clover that you'll see. Of course, you can also use um, other types of mulching. So you can use um, uh, wood mulch like I've used, you can use leaves, you can use hay, and you can even use green, what's called green manure mulch. And what that is, is like take my moringa plant, I'm gonna get up because I, I'm, I'm ready to, to walk around and show you guys some things. But one of the plants that can be really good use for, um, for a green cover cropping is tons and tons of moringa. If you've got lots of moringa, cut that stuff back and just lay it down. Sometimes you'll hear that called chop and drop. So if you're cleaning up your garden and you're getting it ready for the fall planting, don't just chop and take stuff away from your garden. Put it back down on your garden and just cover your soil up. That's very important. Keep your soil covered. It keeps the coolness in your soil. It keeps the moisture in your soil. It keeps the structure in your soil so that your soil can maintain, your plants can stay happy, okay? So anytime I have bare soil, I'm always looking at it, trying to figure out ways that I can keep it covered up. If you're building a culture bed, you have a runoff, which means a lot of your ground cover will end up down here. Just keep putting different types of plants in here. You can see that I have a radish plant that I'm just letting go. Um, other types of things that'll just start, you know, peeking up in other places. Let's come around over here. I want to show you. Um, you can buy uh, some mixtures, especially when you're talking about gardeners. I wouldn't suggest that any larger scale agriculture folks do this. The, 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 the ground cover or the cover crop mixes aren't always perfect for... Um, for the type of uh, uh, agriculture that we do here. And they're not always great mixture for like heights and things that we deal with here. Um, but for gardeners, a nice little ground cover mix is very good. And it will have in it red clover, just like this one that's putting on a flower. I'm so happy to see the flowering from it. And then I've just gone ahead and just let this plant grow. Now, if I uh, don't want it there anymore and I wanna put a different plant in there, I can just cut it back, throw it to my animals, do whatever I need to put it down as a ground cover. 
You can see down here that what this is is just a little bit of a weed clover that's covering as well. And then I've gone ahead and just let other things grow, even if I'm gonna cut them back eventually. I always let lots and lots of this um, scarlet sage or um, red salvia grow, and it kind of starts to fill in the spaces as well. You can see here what I'm talking about with that kind of runoff concept, meaning my seeds are coming up down closer to the bottom. So I need to work on trying to get things planted, bigger plants planted up at the top so that I can always have ground cover around the edge down here, right? And so you can see just how I've allowed, these aren't exactly cover crop plants, but they're definitely keeping my ground cover. They're keeping that structure in there. I have lots of things growing um, and they have a job besides just there. Now, of course, here you can see I've got my peas and you'll see lots and lots more peas starting to come up over in the other garden when we get over there. Here's some more of that clover that I've talked about. Not only is this clover helping to cover my ground, but it's also putting nitrogen into my soil. This kale plant needs a lot of nitrogen. It's eating up a lot of nitrogen. So of course I want to have some nitrogen available for it to get access to. Here's another plant over here. Um, I will tell you something about yarrow. Yarrow doesn't really like our summer heat that much, but if you get it in a really good place where it takes off, it'll do fine just like this. This is a, more of a wild yarrow, a white flowered yarrow. And once you get it to take off, you really can't kill it. And so one of the things you can do, one of the things I can do um, to help folks out is take some of these out, plant them in a pot, and then um, let, them, let them have a replant. Now I've also told you that yarrow has a lot of great medicinal purposes. We've used it for actually coagulating blood. Our friend Tevin um, Gray, who runs the, uh, the Learning Garden, the Keepers of the Garden Project, um, he taught us about how you can take a piece of yarrow if you've got a cut on your finger and it'll close up that cut real fast. So those are other things to keep in mind. Never forget that this um, Longevity Spinach Green Harmony is a beautiful edible landscape that also creates a nice ground cover for you when you're looking just to keep your ground covered up, but it's also edible as well. Vinca is a great plant that doesn't mind. It'll just kind of grow and, um, and cover up the soil. It's always got pretty flowers on it. It's a pretty generic flower that grows really well. You see it all over the place. But when you're looking for plants to kind of fill in those gaps and just fill in those holes, like you see me saying, well, I've got holes over here. I need to figure out how to keep them covered up. Put those plants up on top and then you know you've always got some ground coverage right there as well. So then back over here to the Cuban oregano, all the different types of oregano are fantastic for sprawling. And you can see how this one just kind of went under the, it, it has a root underground. You can see that like, well, that part came off, but. There's a root right here, not a root, but a stem right here that becomes the root as well. And then it'll just reach out. I have to cut it back on purpose because it was taking over this entire bed and I didn't want it to own that entire bed, but I like that plant, it's really pretty. It's something to keep in mind when you're just trying to cover space. Like I'm running out of space here, but if you're in a bigger bigger position or you're, at, you're planting a new garden, these are important plants that will just help you cover that. Peppermint, as I mentioned before, same type of thing. I've actually managed to kill all of my peppermint in the garden because of other types of things growing over the top of them. Um, so I don't really have any peppermint to show you right now, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Peppermint is easy, helpful, knocks out weeds, hot, and knocks out everything else. You can see that um, I have uh, clover over there growing. I've got clover over here growing all put it helping to put nitrogen in the soil but also puts on pretty little yellow flowers it's basically a weed for net for that for the most part um this is a marjoram which is related to oregano same thing it just kind of bushes the um there's a different smaller leaf like traditional oregano that is really the one that'll do the best type of underground growing and popping up just like peppermint will do same type of thing so um then you can see here a little bit of the sprawling concept this is a, a cantaloupe that's gonna um, cut, you know, cover this cover this area more so. Look at my pretty zinnia that just popped open. A little baby one. All right, come this way. If you've got containers in your garden right now, if you have a container garden, you've got to make sure you keep those plants watered. I'll tell you that just one day without watering, these plants, they all looked very, very dreary. So this morning I got out here right after the church service, between church service and um, coming over here to do this and just got my garden nice and watered. So. Okay, speaking of weeds that I've let go, here's a very nice cover crop right here, or ground cover type of weed. 
I don't even, some of you out there might know what it is exactly. Is it, it may even be Culver and I just don't know. This is a different kind. Anyways, if you know what this is, you might tell us or tell me whatever it is, but it's just a weed. It's a weed you probably have seen growing on your sidewalks or in your grass or whatever. And um, when I saw it here, I just went ahead and left it. I left it because why not? It doesn't have any, re there's no reason not to leave this type of low uh, ground cover weed. At, out at the learning garden, we were very particular about leaving all the different types of ground cover weeds because there's no reason not to leave them. They're covering our soil and they're helping us maintain a huge space that we can't naturally maintain maybe by ourselves with the amount of labor we have available to us. So you can see right here, all the different types of um, black eyed peas that are starting to come up over here. Of course, black eyed peas are trellising, but in the meantime, they're covering all this stuff up back here that I couldn't manage to get stuff to grow in because it was such a new garden and it just wasn't healthy enough and ready yet that I've allowed these black eyed peas to come up. The black eyed peas are doing really, really well. They're giving beauty and greenery, but they're also helping to cover this soil to prepare this soil more for my next planting season. I've also put in different varieties of yarrow I will remind you again that yarrow does have a hard time in our summer, so you have to protect it a little bit, um, especially some of these more ornamental varieties like this red one here that I think I've pretty much killed. So it's, it, it didn't like the heat uh, over the last couple of days. That's just something to keep in mind as well. Let's see if there's any other. Your, your cucumbers will sprawl on the ground in a nice way. If you let them do that, they won't be as productive. Uh, they, they might be as productive, like the ones we have out at the farm are looking really good, um, and they're just kind of ground covering, you know, completely ground covering. But um, but uh, if you you know the same type of concept I said before, just let them let them do a nice coverage, ground coverage. You can see what I'm talking about here yet again, and that is uh, the types of plants I have to plant up here need to be more permanent and need to be strong enough to stay up here on top because a lot of my seeds will come will will will. will come down to the bottom down here. Um, another one that I didn't think about, uh, now I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> that happened, doesn't matter. Um, there's, there's, there's all different types of flowers that are great little ground covering flowers that can be very helpful for you as well. Um, and there's also different types of um, what are called beneficial seed mixes that have different types of ground covering plants that will actually even come up even like I have some dill coming up again, I have cilantro coming up again. That plant's not gonna do any good in the summertime, but even if it comes up just for a little while and spends some time helping to create some ground structure and then putting some material in the soil and covering the soil, that's really important. So uh, I've also got a little bit of thyme over here. Thyme, you need to give thyme some time uh, to really take off and be the most successful. Um, I have worked hard to uh, make sure I get this little section watered over here, mostly because of that thyme plant. Um, and so that's really the main thing. That's really what's going on uh, in the gardening right now. Look at this little lemon cucumber I have here. Isn't that pretty? Taken off, taken over. All right, that's really all I have to say for today. Um, again, please come out and join us if you like doing church service outside or you, that concept sounds good to you or just being in the garden and praying. Try that, 7.30 a.m. next Sunday, First United Methodist Church. Also, please remember that Joe and I do a podcast called Dinner Table Talks. Uh, we launch it every Monday morning. We are now launching episode 41, uh, which means we've been doing this for 41 weeks. And uh, we're looking forward to making the, 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 to turning the corner and getting to 52 weeks. He had a lot of pollen on his back. Did you notice that? You get in there and you pollinate. Could you pollinate my, my squash better, please? <laughs> all right i love my garden and i enjoy speaking to you guys on sunday morning very much and if you ever need any help with your backyard on a one-on-one -on -one basis i'm available for consultations very inexpensive an initial consultation just costs 75 dollars, and i give you about two to three hours of my time um an hour of it on site in your location helping you out so just reach out to me and i'd love to help you out y'all have a fantastic sunday enjoy the beautiful weather